How do you like doing that? Well, first of all, um, now I'll just an introduction with uh, Austin. Is it okay if I stand here? I don't really like behind the mic. Can everybody hear me okay? Usually I like that. Just go a little bit. But um, I'll talk about Robbie and Austin, my assistants, once we're done and what order that we're going. But um, first of all, I just want to say it's an honor to be here. Um, you know, whenever you get going on these clinics, maybe the ABCA or the South Carolina Coaches Association, you know, the season's right around the corner. All right, you guys are, are finishing up a uh, period right now. We start practice tomorrow, so you know the juices really start to get flowing this time of year. Um, but it is an honor to be here. Um, first of all, I want to tell you guys, appreciate what you guys do. All right, appreciate what you guys do. Um, you are the backbone, you're the lifeblood of South Carolina baseball. You make our jobs easier. Um, we have a whole bunch of really, really good coaches in here. Um, we got some guys that's been around for a while. We got some, some young guys in here, but what you guys do, we appreciate. Uh, it makes our job uh, a lot easier uh, going forward. Um, I do have to uh, want to thank uh, the board, but more importantly, uh, Eddie Hill, uh, my right-hand man. Um, about a year ago, uh, you know, he came up, uh, came up to the office. He's my director of operations also. Um, he comes up after last year's, and he didn't ask us. He said, now you guys are speaking next year, right? And so he told us that we were going to be here. So, and you can't tell Eddie no, right? You cannot tell Eddie, <laughs> Eddie no. Um, and I know from a board standpoint, and personally, just seeing how much work goes into this, right? On a day-to-day basis, about the last month and a half, we've seen what he's done and when he's on the phone, uh, making phone calls, getting the speakers, getting the hotels, everything that you guys do. So um, it, it's, it's a lot. And again, Eddie, appreciate uh, you having us and what you do uh, for us at, at, at Winfrey. Um, when he asked me to speak, right, he, he started thinking about what I wanted to do. And he always hear a lot about practice planning. He always heard a lot about culture. Um, but I came back to the passion that I have. So I want to talk a little bit about outfield play. You don't really hear a lot about outfield play. Um, for me, in outfield play, you know, it's been a long time doing it. Uh, this is my 28th year of uh, coaching outfielders, and it's my 28th year on the Division I level. I'll be the first one to tell you, this is not all the stuff that I've, I've, I've made. Um, I've taken stuff from when I was a high school freshman. I still use today, from playing in college, from my days at Eastern Kentucky, from my days at Stetson, and especially here, and it's an honor that my mentor, one of my best friends, I uh, worked for Jack Leggett for, for eight years. Um, in this presentation, you'll hear and you'll see a lot of Jack Leggett. Um, you come to my program on a day-to-day -day basis, you will see a lot of Jack Leggett in my program. So I give him a, a lot of credit for him uh, developing me for the person I am, but also the coach I am. So I take a lot, but you're going to hear a lot of the things that, that Jack said. You guys worked a lot of camps with Jack. You're going to hear a lot of things that we have in this presentation it goes back uh, uh, from Jack. So I just appreciate everything that he's done for me uh, going forward with that. Um, went for a baseball. New for Balfield is the way we do it. Okay? Um, first things that we start start with, okay? for me, the importance of outfield play. And I think for me, um, it is undercoached. And I think that's one of the things, I think the reason why it is undercoached, a lot of times you see uh, coaches, they're not outfielders, right? Some of the best coaches in the country are catchers, they're middle infielders. Right, they're pitchers, but you just don't see a lot of coaches that are outfielders. And I think for me, it's the old adage where, okay, let's just get one of my assistants and we'll hit some fungos, right? And that's your outfield work. Well, for me, I take great pride in that. All right, we work on outfield every single day. And again, as I mentioned before, this is my 28-year uh, coaching at Division One level, and I still work with the outfielders every single day. You take pride. What we start out with. Every session, every year, first session of the year, we talk about goals and expectations. Just like we all do, right, with our teams, we talk about goals and expectations. I think your outfielders has to have goals. For us, it can range from year to year, right? It could just be keeping, uh, uh, you're keeping the don't play in order all the time, right? You're hitting the cutoff man all the time, right? No doubles, 
right? Nobody's checking the extra base. No error. It can be whatever you want, but they also have an expectation of how you want to play, right? How you want to practice. And I think that is very, very important when you're going throughout those to set those expectations, just like we all do with our team, right? But you do it with the outfielders. I think a good outfielder can save your runs. What we talk about is our outfielders are like, is like that DB out on an island, right? In football. When that DB gets beat, it's usually for a long yards for a touchdown. That's the same way with uh, an outfielder. If an outfielder makes a mistake, right, you're usually getting a runner in scoring position or you're giving up a run. So I think it's very, very important that if you teach your outfielders correctly, right, you can save runs. You can save your team runs. I think that's really, really important as we go forward. Characteristics of an outfielder, what we look for, all right, especially like at a win. Right? We're not going to get the 6'3", guy. We're not going to get the uh, outfielder that has that 70 on. So what are we looking for? We're looking for, first, is athleticism. And the way I say athleticism, we need a guy that hips move. The first step uh, is good. They open up correctly, right? And then they have anticipation, right? You have anticipation. You have a center fielder that can read the ball as it's going to read the bat angle, right? He's getting good jumps. Sorry. So if you have a guy that has athleticism, anticipation, right, you're going to have a really good outcome. And the one that really comes to mind is Jackie Bradley Jr. Um, I watched him recruit him when he was an amateur, right? We, I coached to get him when he, against him when he was at South Carolina, and I watched him closely and with the Red Sox. To me, right, you put, I remember seeing him at an East Coast Pro Showcase doing the 60. He wasn't a 6'2", 6'3", 60, 6'8", 6'9", maybe you take better than that. You watch his arm, it was good, not great. But you watch him right now, how he gets his angle, his jumps, right? How his body sinks up when he throws the ball, right? He has got great carry. <coughs> He's one of the best out there. But I think if you just look at his skill set, it's not that 6260, it's not that 70 on. But he has everything that you look for to be a great outfielder. So I think that's an example that uh, I always get. First thing we talk is simple as simple can be. First thing, we got to talk about this, and we see this all the time. We talk about finger position in a glove. You don't even think about that. But as an outfielder, that's the first thing we talk about when my freshmen they come in. Right? You always see outfielders, your freshmen come in, they hold it like an infielder. Right? You're not utilizing that full 12 inches of glove. Simple, move all the fingers over. Now these guys are able to utilize the whole pocket. Then you always see guys will do this, and then they'll still stick their finger in. What we talk about there is that we have what we call securing the baseball. When we secure the baseball as a ground ball, we're coming up and we're just made a wrist flick. But when you have that wrist flick, what does your finger do? It automatically pushes up. The ball has a tendency to come out. So you think it's something you don't think about, but that's the first thing we talk about is how to wear a glove in the outfield. We want to utilize that whole 12 inch. We want to have, we call it the long pocket. Just moving the fingers over. So you'd be amazed how many freshmen come in and they don't know how to use the glove. We talk about ready position. One thing that we do is that, just like we all do, we want to put our guys in the best position to be successful. Right? We don't clone guys. We don't clone guys as hitters. We don't clone guys as pitchers. We want to make sure that they are comfortable and they are the best they can be. Very simple with our ready position, we want to get in a very comfortable position. All different ways, right? Some guys are parallel, some guys have you know, a little staggered. Again, it doesn't matter to me. I just want them in a good athletic position. We want to have pre-pitch movement. Again, there's a lot of different ways in your pre-pitch movement, right? Some guys just like to walk through. Some guys just like a right left. Some guys like a right left, right kind of hop. Again, for me, I just want them to put them in the best position to be successful, what they feel comfortable. So we're getting them in a ready position. We don't want hands on the knees. We want the hands out front. We also like the palm up, okay, with that. We want a slight body lean. We want the, the weight on the balls of our feet. And then we want to make sure with repetition, right? We want to make sure they do it at the same time. We want to make sure that their right foot is coming down as the ball is crossing the plate of contact. We want to have good timing. It's almost like I explained, like a free throw. Right? Free throwers. You're doing the same thing every single time. 
and that's what we want our guys to do with the outfield in a ready position. So we, we will um, do this quite a bit to make sure that they are in a really good position. One thing I think that's undercoached is throwing. We spend a lot of time on throwing. Um, I know in summer ball, a lot of you guys can coach summer ball, you guys just don't have time. Right? You're in a tournament, you've got 10 minutes, we're trying to turn the field over, and you're trying to get that next game going 10 minutes. You don't have time to have a throwing program. Now, in high school, you probably have a little more time in your practice steps. But what we do, what we're trying to accomplish um, in our throwing, right? three areas. First, we're trying to create character. We're trying to create accuracy. We want rhythm, and we want momentum. If we get those guys, it goes back to being athletic. Right? You don't have to have a powerful arm to have a good arm from the outfield and throw well. So we try to create carry in everything that we do. We try to create accuracy with rhythm and momentum in everything that we do. From a mechanic standpoint, it's very simple. Grip, basically what we'll do if it's a clock. Right? We want four seam rotation, we want four seams. Right? We want 12-6 rotation, if the ball is a clock, you want 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and you want it out on your fingers. Simple as that. We practice this every day when we do our, when we just throw. My guys will throw and they'll get the four seam rotation every single time. We want long arm. Right? We call it thumb to thigh, fingers to the sky. I picked this up from one, I think, one of the best pitching coaches in the country. We were together at Stetson, his name's Derek Johnson. He's the uh, current uh, pitching coach uh, for the uh, Cincinnati Reds. He was at Vanderbilt a long time. And we talked about this and said the easiest way to teach arm action, <coughs> thumb to thigh, fingers to the sky, as an outfield. Now catchers and are all different, but from outfield we want the long arm. It's easy for them to relate to. So we talk about thumb to thigh, fingers to the sky, we're getting our hand out and up. We want the elbow up. We make our throw, thumb to thigh, elbow up. And then the thing that I learned from Jack Leggett is probably the thing that stuck with me one of the most first time practicing at Clemson. I heard him film through his throwing drills, and it makes so much sense to me. We want extension and nose to left. Simple as this. You see outfielders all the time when they take a curl hop in, in uh, pregame, they make a throw. Next thing you know, they're coming off. They're not even watching where the ball's going. Simple, we want to make sure our nose is to hits the partner's left, or the cutoff man or the base. And then the last one is last 10%. You keep the hands behind the ball, and our last 10%, that's going to help you get the four seam rotation, and that's going to increase, your, increase your, your carry. So those are things that we're looking for with mechanics. Drill that we do, simple. We do this with all our, each one of our outfits have this ball. This is what I've used, the one I've used for years. Take a sharpie, right, half the ball. Now you're able to see your rotation. I've done this for years. My outfielders from last year, I had a few seniors, they came up with this one. Same concept. What I like about this is instant feedback. Right? You get instant feedback. When we're doing our drills, you're seeing that we're getting four seam rotation. Our hands are behind, our feet are behind the baseball. You're getting a four seam rotation, and it's just like that. It's going one way or the other, they can fix it, right? They know their body, right? Instead of me trying to fix it, they get instant feedback. Just like we do long T, right? Everybody likes long T. Why don't we do long T? We get instant feedback, right? We know what your ball is doing, so you know what your hands are coming through. Same concept, same concept, concept right there. So we're trying the importance of that with finger position, right? Simple, as simple can be right there. Use that for years. Then we'll get into the throwing drills. Right? Incorporate those, again, Coach Leggett, I've adjusted them a little bit um, over the years for outfield play. Alright, first one we all know, we're getting our partner, we're about 10 feet away, elbow up, hands behind the ball, we're staying fingers behind the ball, it's a firm to our partner, four seam rotation, we're working on last 10%. Second one is one knee, we're on one knee, we're working on our arm action. Thumb thigh, fingers to the sky, we're finishing out over our knee, we're working on our glove hand, back into our elbow. Again, one build upon the next one. Ten toes, we're in athletic stance. 
Toes are to your partner. We sink, rotate our shoulders, down, back, and up, <coughs> nose to leather, to our partner. We are moving back on number two and number three. Now we're probably, as we're at number three, ten toes, we're probably about 20, 25 feet away. Going into our next drill. Now we're going into, again, just keep building. Now we talk, I talk about rhythm. Now we're trying to create some rhythm. All right? Rhythm is what we just call figure eight. We start in our chest. We're going to figure eight. Boom, finish it up, out front. <laughs> now I have to do this. I give all the credit to my video photographer and uh, photograph to Eddie Hill. Eddie Hill helped me the other day with all these uh, videos. So if they don't come out, it's Eddie's fault. Um, but again, figure eight. Then we move to the next one. Now we are trying to create a little bit more rhythm. It's a walking figure eight. The point, the coaching point here is the, 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 the back foot. All right, a lot of times what you'll see when guys throw, right, you don't throw like that, right? Pitcher, when they come in, they come to the power position. What I watch is the back foot is making sure our instep is in and making sure we get to this position to throw. And again, but we're walking with a figure eight, we're creating rhythm. Everything that I do, fly balls, fly balls, I want rhythm. I want momentum. And this is just helps us. Right, you can see how his, his instep comes in, and that's a big coaching point. So now, because a pitcher doesn't throw like this, right? A pitcher's going to throw like this, and that's what we want, and that's why we either pro step or pro hop when we go to an outfit. Then this one I created just uh, probably about a year ago. What I found out is I call it the swinging gate. Sometimes you get those throwers in the outfield, they'll get that swinging gate, right? Everything comes in there, and then they really lose it. What I did here, we just start here, it's just two skips, but what we're concentrating, the, 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 the front foot, is we're getting it down. We want to get down. So it's two hops, right? Two hops, and we're just getting it down. So boom, boom, get it down, and down, back it up. It's very simple. It's getting rid of this. A lot of times I see this a lot, and I call it the swinging gate. So again, now we're into six. Now we go to hop, hop. Here we're trying to start getting into our power position. All right, we're just gonna, you're gonna see uh, Scout, he's gonna get up to the power position, hop, hop, and we're collecting ourselves, down, back, and up, and we're working through the baseball. You'll see him. Leg up, hop, hop, down, back, and up, and finish the throw. The young man you're seeing right here is probably the best outfit I've ever had at that point throw. He's probably in the top three I've ever had all the time. Just, he's from a, um, hard nosed family. He goes, gets the ball. He's probably the best guy I've ever had turning his back to the infield and going after a ball. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Now we put it all together. When we put it all together, right, that's when we go to long toss. Now there's so many ways you can do long toss. Over the years, you do by distance. You know, we may go 90, 120, 150, 180. I've done it on a number of throws, I've done it timing. It really doesn't matter. Right? Everybody has their preference. But what we do in our long toss, we simulate every ball that we have. We just don't throw to throw. What we're doing, we're simulating a ground ball, we're getting our forcing rotation, right? We're simulating fly ball. Everything that we do, we're simulating a ground ball or a fly ball when we throw. We just don't go out there throw to throw. I will tell you this. I've had outfielders improve their arms on a yearly basis by doing these drills. Right now, the early part, right now we're in our individual phase, our guys are doing this and it'll take about 10 minutes to go through the drills. During the season before a game, we still do them, but it may only take five minutes, right? You can do them a little quicker, but they know. It does help. I'm a big believer in these throwing drills and everything that we do. I think it's very important. Before we get into the ground ball, fly ball, Right? You're always hearing a lot about pro step pro, or versus a crow hop. Right? To me, right, there's positive and negatives to both. Again, it, go, it goes back to putting your guys in the best position to be successful. For me, the pro step um, is for the guy that has a naturally strong arm. All right? It's a naturally strong arm because it's a quicker transition and it's more linear. OK? 
Okay? So guys that have, I got guys that do both. Compared to the crow hop, I think you can be more accurate. All right? It takes a little bit more time, but it creates more momentum, and you're going to get more carry, but you're a little bit under control. The young man that I'm showing on the video, he's a crow hop guy. But he, has a, he probably has a 60-65 on. But he likes, he likes staying under control. He gets a little bit more air on him, but he's able to collect himself, get it back on the backside, and the ball really comes out. So again, I think it's just really up to you and your players what they feel more comfortable with. Both are good, right? You see it on the internet. You see people talking about. Most people think, well, you got to do pro high, or you got to do the pro step right now. Well, if you're a big leaguer and most of it, you got that kind of arm strength, yeah. But I think you, at our level, your level, I think what's going to happen, you lose a little bit of accuracy. So that's now that ball's going all over the place because they're trying to be too quick with it. So again, each way works for both players. Again, we, I give my guys the option whatever they feel more comfortable. with. Alright, talk a little bit about ground balls. First thing we always talk about everything that we do, fast to slow. Outfield, uh, fly balls and um, ground balls, we work fast, fast to slow, everything that we do. We always want to call them up. A lot of times I call them flappers, right? You don't want flappers. You get the guy that flaps, next thing you know, you get that ball that's underneath your uh, legs. And again, we talk about being on an island, that's the worst run you can have in an outfield when that ball gets to the fence, right? So we want to make sure, call them up. You want to read, a guy that can read ground balls, right? You're going to have to read the hop. As we know, with the hop, you're trying to throw somebody up, you always want to get that hop is about hip level compared to a short hop. So some guys, you may have to, you have to read, teach them how to read, read the hops that we go <coughs> We want a rhythm. Again, we go back to that word rhythm, right? We rhythm, and then we've got to break down. What I talk about is almost like an airplane landing. Right? I got that from when I was a freshman in high school. It's st I still use it today. Right? If I'm an outfielder, right, we don't just go straight down. It's a gradually, like an airplane is landing, you want to gradually come in with rhythm. With rhythm. So you're gradually coming down as you're approaching the ball, fast and slow, breaking down, out front. So it's almost like an airplane that is, that is flying. We want to make sure that we're working down to up. All right? Never up to down, just like an intern. We want to work down to up. Depending if you're a pro hop guy compared to a curl hop guy, right? It's going to depend on what your front leg. If you're a pro hop guy, right, your glove leg's going to be out front or right, behind. If you're a curl hop guy, your glove, your glove uh, leg is going to be out front. So it just depends on how you do it. I'm going to show some pictures of that. We want to make sure the glove is out front, not behind. And the pro hop guys, the problem I see is that your glove leg is back. And the pro hop, what they want to do, they want to have their glove back here, and they lose sight of it. You want to make sure that glove is out front, no matter if you're a pro hop or pro hop. And that's the biggest thing I have with the pro hop guys, is that they get their glove back and they lose sight of the ball. You want to make sure it's out front in everything that we do. We mentioned before, when we have the ball, we want to secure the baseball. And it's just a, a, a wrist flick. It's just a simple wrist flick. We're catching a ground ball out front. We catch the ball here, and it's just a quick wrist flick. Now we secure the baseball. We want to secure the baseball. It's easier to come up, ready to throw. Over the years, we've always had problems with having our outfielders know when they should be able to make a throw or just hit the cutoff. Right? As all coaches, right? We hate putting runners in scoring position. And that's what happens with an outfield. They make a mistake, they miss a cutoff man, right? And they try to throw a guy out at home plate and they have nowhere close and they're batter runners at second base. Now we're, we all get upset. I think we had first time this year, we had an air squad game. We did it three times in a row and I went ballistic. All right? It's funny. We do an evaluation at the end of, of the fall and I ask them, where do we need to work on? Every one of them said that. Because, you know, the players just regurgitate what you said. But what we've come up with, is, is what we call lanes. It's very simple, right? Each guy has a different lane, okay? What we talk about, lane is gonna be right at you, and it could be two to three feet to your left and your right. Any time in those lanes, we're gonna have a chance to throw a guy out. Any time outside those lanes, we gotta hit the cutoff man or we gotta go to the base. So it's inside the lane or outside the lane. Very simple. Now, every outfielder is different. Right? Every outfit, every lanes are going to be different. But you'll see as we get further into this, when we do our short box stuff, 
I put cones out. I'll put cones out with the lanes and I'll set them out so they have an idea what balls they can throw on, what balls they can't, what balls they have to go to the cutoff man or to the base, what balls they have a chance to, to throw. And then we talk about the speed of the ball and also the, the runner at second base or third base tagging up, what have you. There's other variables that we talk about. But that's a way to give them an area with cones to tell them, okay, this is the ball I can throw to, this is the ball I have to go to cutoff man. Because you always talk about it. Right? I, used to, I used to talk about, okay, let's well, go two or three feet to your left, two or three feet to your right. Right? You need to really just try to hit the cutoff edge. Now it gives them a visual, and it, it's kind of worked for us uh, over the last couple of years. And this is just going back to the ground ball to show you. This young man right here, he does a pro step, as you can see. The glove uh, side leg is back. The crow hop guy, the glove is out front. You see how they're out front, they're, they're down, they're working down to up, their heads are up. All right, and they're in a very good position to, to catch ground balls. Five balls are real simple. What we talk about always above our shoulder, all right, above our chin, thumb to thumb. All right, you used to talk about you always want to be able to throw inside. I've gotten away from that. You want to make them comfortable. All right, you want to make sure they're comfortable. So we go thumb to thumb, front of the chin. Um, we want to try to keep the eyes on the top of the seam. You have seams. You always want to try to keep your eyes on the top of the seam as the ball's coming down. Um, there are instances if you have to come in, right? You have to catch it below the waist, and that's fine. But if it's just a regular fly ball, we want long pockets. We want to stay behind the baseball. In our program, if it's a no out to us, we're still working through the baseball all the time. We want to get them in the, in the habit of always coming in through the baseball. Because that one time we got to throw a guy out third throw out at home, and they, they get standstill because I used to do it. So we do it all the time, no matter how many outs. All right? We never let them, if they want to catch the ball like this in the big they do when they get in the big leagues. But here we're working through the baseball all the time. We talk about athleticism with drop steps. We watch the drop sets. We do a lot of short box stuff that we talk about drop sets and angles. Right? We want to make sure our hips work. We want to make sure 45 to 90 when we open up. And we always talk about depth, direction, depth. Depth, direction, depth. First step always has to be depth. Then you have to have direction. And then sometimes you may have to read, go to more depth if you mis, mis, misread a, a ball. So those are things that we always talk about. Depth, direction, depth. Again, fast to slow, just like uh, the ground ball work. Again, just a, a picture showing ball above the shoulders, above the chin, making sure we're watching the top of the seam as we come through the baseball. Big on daily routines, right? Us coaches, we're all about routines, right? We love routines. And I think that's part of the great thing about baseball is, is to have a routine, right? With our outfielders, we have a routine. We started this about three or four years ago. Again, a lot of this we take from the pitchers, right? We do our Jager bands. Every position player does Jager bands. We've probably done that for the last five, six years at Winthrop. It's really cut down our arm injuries. We haven't had any major arm injuries as position players. So the guys know they've got to go through their band work before they even start practice. Once they do uh, band work, they go to the agilities. Again, Coach Leggett probably started agilities back you know, in the, in, the, in the early 90s, he was like probably the first guy that started doing it. So we got the high hurdles, we got the medium hurdles, we got the low hurdles, and we got the ladders. We go through a quick circuit. We want to work on our athleticism, we want to work on our hips. We've all done those before. Then we go into our throwing drills. As I said right now, right now, our guys are doing the throwing drills probably 10, 15 minutes as we start practice, game maybe five minutes. But we're still doing throwing drills every single day. And then we have a, a warm up drill. I got this from a receiver's coach. All right, I was watching football practice one day, and I saw a coach with receivers. We can do this drill with glove or no glove. It's really basic. We're doing a fly pattern, we're doing a um, post, we're doing a corner, and then basically what I call Willie Mays. It really gets the feet going. I can really do it in a close area, and I can watch it. Real simple. The dots are my cones. The triangles are the players. The, the chest is to the cone. When I say go, they're doing, they're walking into the pre-step position. I'll say go, what we'll do first, we'll just do a fly pattern. Straight up, I'm just tossing up. They're running about 30%. When I'm on the right side, the right hand is right, they're going across their body. What we talk about there is I can like doing it with no glove. We go thumb up and out. 
All right, I come up and out. We want that glove up and out. A lot of times you see when outfielders are going across their body, they hit the glove and they want to catch the ball this way. All right? If we talk about thumb up and out, now we're catching the ball here with no glove. I can really watch their thumb, what they're trying to do. So that we'll do that two or three times. Then we'll quickly just do a quick post. As what they're, now we're working our angles. We're being sharp. We're trying to pivot and go. Work on their athleticism. Again, it's just about 30%. They're going, I'm tossing the ball. Right? They're keeping their eyes behind their glove or behind their hand at that point. Right? We talk about a lot. Everything that we do, we want our eyes. We catch our first basements. are always our eyes behind their glove. Our outfielders are eyes behind their glove. So we're working on that. Then we'll just do a corner. Right? Corner. Now we're working on, again, cutting and then also what I call reversing out. So for our right handers. So we're swiveling our head. So we're starting, then we get our head around. Now I'm throwing the baseball. They're picking up the baseball. Again, glove and no glove. And then we just flip over to the left side. Right? Same thing on the left side. After we do that two or three times, we'll go to the middle. I'll start on the throwing hand side. I'll go to the glove hand side. Right? Then we'll start the glove hand side. I'll throw it to the throwing hand side so they reverse out and do opposite. Then I'll go straight up. Back to me, and now we're working on body control, body control, and we're the Willie Mays. Phenomenal drills. So now I'm just, again, daily routine, we do it every day. Again, we can do it for five minutes, we can do it for 20 minutes. Right now, we're about 15 minutes of doing this. Once we get into the season, it'll be about five minutes, just to make sure we do a really good job with their feet. Outfield training sessions. I love close area teaching. Because in the outfit, what do you have? You're always a long distance. It's hard to teach. Right? It's really hard to teach. So I do everything that I do is in what we call short box. Right? Short box. Just like the infielders always do those short box infield drills, I take that to the outfit. So we'll start with our closed area, short box. I have a junior hack attack. Best machines out there. Yeah, if, you buy, if you buy a hack attack, look. Right? We have a junior hack attack a little shorter. Right? I can do the whole drill series that we have with a um, uh, junior pack attack. If I'm able to have a manager, which we don't have a lot of managers at Winthrop, but if I have somebody to help me or trainer, they can do long hack attack so they can be at the machine and I can be out in the outfield helping them teaching points right there. Um, not a big fungo guy. Don't like the fungo. We'll do it because what it does, right? the machines, the hack attacks are easy fly balls. But what the fungo do, you miss hit, you'll have some top spin. So they're good every once in a while, but we don't do the line. Best thing for the outfielders, in my opinion, is live BP. Again, got that from Coach Leggett, everything we play live. But what I do sometimes is I'll challenge my outfielders. We may have one day that we're going to play in, we're going to play shallow in BP. Everybody's playing shallow, so we're working on balls over our head. One day we're going to play deep like no doubles, right? So they get the idea, because we, we talk about we don't want no doubles, right? We've got the winning run time on our first base, right? We can't give up a double, but they don't understand what our angles have to be. Our angles have to be deeper. So we'll play deep in BP, right? We may shave to the left. We may shave to the right, right? We may go to our 0-2-1-2, where our outfielders are um, moving 0-2-1-2 in BP. Pitchers are out of the way. And again, you're giving them scenarios rather than just standing in their position, right? We've all seen that. And they wear out that one spot every single day. So you can incorporate, right, your positioning with the outfield. All right? And I think that helps the outfield know different ways they can do it. So I think that's really important. Talk about the drill series that we mentioned before. This is, if you can see it, I know it's hard to see, but we've got their cones. We've got the in lane, all right, outside lane. All right? And we'll do this for ground balls and fly balls. And we have a series that we go through. All right? The first one is we're playing on a bad outfield. All right? There's some outfielder, outfields in the Big South that aren't as good as others. All right? And there's some high school you play on, it's not as good as others. So there's sometimes you got nobody on it, you got to get down on one knee or you catch like it. So we'll go through one knee. Then we'll go through balls in lane. Okay? We're working on rhythm, we're working on momentum. Then we work on all or nothing. We got to throw the guy out, and then we work on out, outside the lanes. We're working on our drop step. We're working on uh, getting around the ball, right? We're working on, you know, what we want to do is uh, is create a straight line to where we're going. That's why we round the ball up. So you want you, 
the ball, your buddy, and the base, right? And that's what we're trying to simulate outside of the lane, right? Then we can go to the fly ball. Again, we're doing this in a very short area with cones. I'll just toss them right at them. We're working through the baseball. We're working on fundamentals. We're working on angle. We'll go to the left, we'll go to the right. All right, we'll go Willie Mays behind them. We'll reverse out, we're working on our hips. Again, short area, we can work every fly ball, every um, uh, ground ball, and it's a really good way to teach you right there. We're really big into fundamentals. Fundamentals wins you ball games, right? Sloppiness makes you lose ball games. This is where we work on our fundamentals, everything. We just call our drill series. We can do this drill series close, we can do it far with the half attack, right? It can go either, either way that we want. And you can see what I do, when I bring my, my hand up, that's when they're walking into the pitch, right? I'll, they show me, I'll overemphasize my arm back, and then again, same with out, uh, fly ball and ground balls. Drills, we, we can spend all night on drills. Right. There's all different kinds of drills that you have. Um, cone drills, we work on angles, we work on first steps, um, uh, star drills, everything that you want with a drill you can, you can have. Communication, get your outfielders um, side by side, our, our two groups, balls in the middle, ground balls, they're communicating, how are you communicating, uh, how you want your outfielders to Fence drills, right, balls off the fence, we do a lot with that, especially in your corners. Right? We tell our guys, you don't want to be the cat chasing his tail. You get that ball down the line, you got to know your field. We talk about staying under control, reading the ball right there, and we'll go through that. Um, sun, throwing drills, all right, with the screen. We just did this the other day. It's a great way to create rhythm. I'll put a screen, say on the left field line, I'll get about, probably about 30 yards away. I'll just toss it to them. So now they're creating rhythm and, and momentum towards the screen, and they're able to throw it again. Your way, and then you can do different things with the half attack. Right? We call it blind man, have a guy down, throw a ball up, have him come up fine. You do it two guys, two balls at a time, three, three balls at a time. There's all different ways you can do it. Um, with the drills. So, is there any questions? So I know I get through a lot. Is there any questions about output play? If anybody does, this is my uh, uh, email, my cell phone number. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, we really appreciate the uh, um, phone call and answer any questions as we can. Um, next is my uh, pitching coach, Austin Hill. Austin Hill has been with me for three years. Um, played in South Carolina, uh, played high school in South Carolina. Dad was a coach in South Carolina. Um, he's kind of gone up through the ranks, started as a volunteer for me, and was full time two years ago. Um, and then uh, Robbie Monday is uh, third year with me, same thing, he was at Wilmington, kind of worked his way up. I will tell you, these guys are young guys, they're energetic, and they're on the cutting edge. All right? That's one thing I love about them. You're going to hear the next 40 minutes a piece, you're going to hear a lot of great stuff. All right, a lot of great stuff that they're on the cutting edge, all the new type of stuff that's going on. I'm a little bit old school, right? So I think our staff is a little bit old, a little bit of new. And I think it, it really works like almost like a yin and a yang, right? We bounce things off of them. They have great ideas, and I think you're going to really enjoy the next two presentations. So, I'm going to take over.